We have some disturbing information coming out about Thomas Matthew Crook's body, and that's not my words, but the words of a congressman as he uncovered a disturbing fact about the investigation. Now, before we do begin, I do want to ask if you can please like, comment, and share this video because YouTube is going above and beyond to delete likes, comments, and even subscribers from this channel. The more you like, the more you comment, and the more you share, it helps offset what YouTube happens to be doing. When it comes to what took place on July 13th at Trump's rally, I do believe a lot of us, including myself, believe that the man seen in the photos lying prone on the roof was not Thomas Matthew Crooks, but another individual. What happens to be even more bizarre is the fact we still do not know where this suspected individual happens to be. He still has not come out yet. He has not shown any proof of life. His social media has been scrubbed. His name is still trending all over social media. Matter of fact, when this incident first happened, his name was all over the news as being the first person suspected to cause this incident. And people believe that he's deceased and all he would need to do is show some proof of life saying I'm still alive and that would prove he is not the person that's on the roof. Now he doesn't have to do this, but given the fact that your name is all over social media as being the person on the roof, one would think he would come out and clear his name or he would show some proof of life, but it has been over a month and his social media is still scrubbed. Now, with that being said, we have Representative Clay Higgins, a Louisiana Republican who was appointed to Congress's bipartisan task force reviewing the attempt on Trump's life, try to view Crook's body on August 5th as part of his own personal inspection. That is 100% fair. If you are part of a team to gather all of the facts about what took place on July 13th to make everything make sense, one of the things you want to do is view his body because there is a lot of back and forth, a lot of flip-flopping, especially from the FBI and the Secret Service. Given the fact, once again, the man on the roof does not look like Thomas Matthew Crooks, you want to inspect his body to make sure all the information you're being told is 100% factual. Well, the former police captain who happens to be the congressman said his request to view the body caused quite a stir and revealed a disturbing fact. It was at this point he learned that the FBI had released the body for cremation 10 days after what took place in Butler, Pennsylvania on July 13th. What? This congressman was interviewed and he had some rather interesting things to say when it came to the autopsy. And was The other problem is, and you, as you know, um, I went in Sunday morning after mass to the site. I was denied entrance because it was a crime scene. Right, right. Uh, but the, the crime scene was completely cleaned. Uh, we were looking for where's the spent shells. Uh, we're wondering on different things, including where's the body. Uh, and finding out that it really the jurisdiction had been gone from the Butler coroner's office to the Allegheny County coroner's office and I was still waiting to see an autopsy and really we were very concerned about actually seeing the body to look and try to match it up with what the autopsy said and we were told well the FBI made a decision to turn uh, Mr. Cook's body back to his family and uh, permission to go ahead and cremate and at that point it's like all our evidence is gone that we should look at. Okay, okay. Yeah. That is absolutely wild. This proves that something strange, something fishy is indeed taking place here. And we have called this out for quite some time on this channel. Other people on other forms of social media have also called this out that something is just not adding up. Something really stinks when it comes to this whole story. Congressman Higgins says nobody knew that the body had been returned to the family, including the county coroner and local enforcement. He writes that the coroner still had legal authority over the body when the FBI made the decision and accuses the agency of obstruction. That is absolutely crazy. The FBI should know that this investigation, a person attempting to take out a former president and a person that's running again for president will go through multiple channels, multiple channels of investigation. Many people that are assigned to the investigation will want to see the body to make sure it lines up with everything that's said in the autopsy. And the FBI says, nope, we are going to go ahead and get rid of his body right away. 
The article continues to say the congressman's report comes amid grave concerns over how the incident was allowed to unfold, with Trump barely escaping with his life and a rally attendee losing his life in one of the greatest security failings in American history. Secret Service Chief Kimberly Cheadle was forced to resign on July 23rd, but many questions remain unanswered, with no motive yet provided for 20-year-old crooks attempt on Trump's life. That is also rather true. We still do not have a motive as to why Thomas Matthew Crooks went to the rally and caused this incident. And if it's not Thomas Matthew Crooks and it is indeed the other individual on the roof, then his motive is rather clear. He has the history. He caused a scene at Trump's previous rally in 2016 in Butler, Pennsylvania. He has been arrested at multiple rallies for assault. Continuing to read from this article, it says Higgins said that he took it upon himself to investigate during a boots on the ground trip to Butler from August 4th to August 6th. And once again, he is a part of the investigation team. His preliminary investigative report was submitted to Task Force Chairman Mike Kelly on August 12th and released to the public on Higgins website last night. In it, he questions why Crook's body was released to the family by the FBI without any oversight. The problem with me not being able to examine the actual body is that I won't know 100% if the coroner's report and the autopsy report are accurate. We will actually never know Higgins writes. Continuing to state, yes, we'll get the reports and pictures, but I will not ever be able to say with certainty that those reports and pictures are accurate according to my own examination of the body. Again, the FBI should have been aware or should have known that more people than just the FBI and Thomas Crook's family would want to see his body. They had already known a lot of departments were gathering to investigate what took place on July 13th, and they would want to see everything. So again, it's really, really shady on the FBI's part. Higgins states that on July 23rd, the day that Crooks was cremated, both the Homeland Security Committee and the Oversight Committee had open investigations into the attempt. While Speaker Mike Johnson had stated he was forming a congressional investigative body, why then, by what measure, would the FBI release the body to the family for cremation? This pattern of investigative scorched earth by the FBI is quite troubling, Higgins writes. So the exact same day, both the Homeland Security Committee and the Oversight Committee had open investigations into the attempt, the FBI decided, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of the body. You can call me a conspiracy theorist all you want, but day one that I was talking about this story, I said that was not Thomas Matthew Crooks on the roof. And after reading this, if you still believe that was Thomas Matthew Crooks on the roof, then I don't know what to tell you. I do not know what to tell you. Whatever happened to the white van with the Arizona license plates? The only other time we hear about the white van that supposedly had explosives inside was on the body cam footage. News, media, they are not asking any questions or giving any updates about the white van. Those who are assigned to officially investigate what took place on July 13th are also sweeping the white van under the rug. Speaking after the publication of his report, Higgins stated that he will leave no stone unturned as he continues to work alongside his colleagues as part of the bipartisan group investigating the incident on July 13th. Quoted as stating, as I have said, every question will be answered, every theory explored, and every doubt erased. The American people deserve the full truth on the attempt on President Donald Trump's life. Since he no longer has a body to work with, one would hope he would explore the white van further, as besides the body, the white van is the most important element to what took place on July 13th. Because the white van has registration, the white van has license plates to link back to a certain person. Reading this from other articles like the New York Post, it says Higgins claimed that while the body was under the Butler County Coroner's authority, the coroner would have never released Crook's body to the family for cremation or burial without specific permission from the FBI. And he continues to say that this is absolutely unheard of. 
Along with revealing the disturbing fact of Crook's body, Higgins blasted the FBI for its handling of the scene, stating the law enforcement agency released the area after three days. The FBI cleaned up biological evidence from the scene, which is unheard of, Higgins wrote. Cops don't do that ever. Higgins said he interviewed several first responders who expressed everything from surprise to dismay to suspicion regarding the fact that the FBI released the scene so early after July 13th. It should be noted that the FBI was fully aware of the fact that Congress would be investigating July 13th. The FBI does not exist in a vacuum. They had to know that releasing the July 13th scene would injure the immediate observations of any following investigation. That also goes along with Thomas Matthew Crook's body. Of course, these other departments want to see the body to once again make sure that everything lines up with what they're being told in the autopsy. This story continues to blow my mind. There are so many rabbit holes to go down into when it comes to this story, and unfortunately, a lot of these rabbit holes lead to nowhere. They're blocked off or they go into a circle. The only thing that does make sense is that absolutely nothing makes sense. And the only time something does indeed begin to make sense is when you start to look at the narrative outside the box. When you start to look at another narrative, then everything starts to come together. But when you look at the official narrative, absolutely nothing makes sense and everybody continues to lie. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.